What's up guys, Noah Quezzi here, and I'm bringing you guys the first tutorial on this channel. Uh, my main channel actually has a bunch of tutorials covering things like this, but this is gonna be a more simplified, beginner-friendly tutorial on how to create football jerseys in Photoshop, or football concept jerseys, rather. So I hope I cover this um, pretty well for beginners, because I am obviously very experienced, so I'm hoping I don't gloss over things, but feel free to drop any questions you have in the comments down below, and I will try to answer them. But let's go ahead and get started with this. This tutorial. So I'm sure you guys have seen my other videos if you're here possibly which features a lot of football jerseys as you can see and I always get questions on how do I make these and I don't really have a solidified uh, video for beginners creating jerseys so I thought I would make this video for that purpose and the templates I use are my own templates for my website templatefc.com um, so if you're willing to put some money forth uh, for this hobby um, and you don't mind supporting me this is the place to get your mockups. Um, you just have to go to shop mockup templates and you'll see a bunch of our templates here. And you can see I use this football one and this football one. Um, so together they're about $50 if you get both. Um, if you just get the full one though, you also get helmet uh, versions as well. And then this one is just the top. Uh, this one also comes with four views. So you get the front, back, an angled view and a side view. Now, uh, I know a lot of people probably don't want to put money forth into this. So if you don't have money to spend on mockups, I really don't have a good alternate that is free. Um, I'm not sure if there's any free football mockups out there because they are time consuming to make, uh, creating all these 3D elements, rendering them out, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, it might be difficult to find free versions of these, but if you do, feel free to let us know in the comments. Also, I'm going to be obviously using Photoshop for my designs, but there is a website you can go to um, that it works exactly like Photoshop, and it is photop.com. You can see it's uh, the same editor as uh, Photoshop, basically, and you get this pop-up. You just got to close that. And then you can uh, open any file here. So we could open uh, from computer and I can find that angled football mockup and open it and basically do everything that I'm about to show you in Photoshop. There are some limitations. It is a bit slower. Um, so things like that. But if you don't want to pay for Photoshop or download a trial or whatever, this is the next best thing. When you download one of these two, you'll get a folder with the PSDs. So this is the top version. Um, so you get all the individual PSDs and then the other one with the helmet and the full jersey um, each comes separated. So you got your helmets here and then you get the full ones here. Um, so these two would be grouped together. This one is on its own and you can see they are PSDs so you can use them in PhotoP. Most of our other products are .tiff files that work like PSDs. So you right click and open them in Photoshop and they're basically PSDs, but those don't open in PhotoP. So um, you'd have to convert them. Usually we would do that for you uh, on template FC. But um, anyway, so once you uh, download one of these, you just want to double click and open it up in Photoshop. So I am using this angled one. And you can see here is our mockup and we can officially get started. So I'm going to walk you through the parts of this mockup uh, since you're, this is probably the first time you're seeing anything like this. So I'm going to walk you through the parts of this mockup in case this is your first time ever seeing something like this. So uh, basically we have the red layers here that are just effect layers. Um, so they're not uh, necessarily needed. As you can see, the reflective layer gives the helmet a reflection and then the glossy one gives it a glossy finish. Then we have the yellow lighting group. And this is the shadows and highlights to make the mock-up three-dimensional. Um, you can see if we open that up, there are some other options too to fit our colors a little better, which we'll get into later on. Uh, we then have the blue folder, which is the design. So if we open that up, you can see the different elements. And if we open up, say, the shirt, you can see we have these layers with these little icons here that are these smart objects uh, or smart layers, some people call them. And if you double click one of these, so if we go to shirt design and double click one of these, it opens a new layer, which is where we add our designs. Um, so that's the fun part of the mockups. And then we have the colors, which are pretty self-explanatory, um, just the colors of the different objects. Um, so before we get started, I want you guys to open up your libraries tab. So to do that, you just go to window and libraries. And uh, if you want it to your side here, you can just drag this around. Sometimes it's on top of the layers, but you can click this little tab and drag it. I like mine on the right side like this so I can see most of my colors. Uh, makes it a bit easier. 
uh, but you can put it wherever you'd like. Where I like to start for my football designs is the helmet. So I'm going to open up my designs and go to the helmet folder and open up the helmet design by double clicking the smart object. And I like the helmet because you can add the logo and get the colors and then use those colors for the other elements. Uh, it's kind of the easiest way, I believe. So I'm going to go ahead and make a Steelers jersey here today. So I'm going to drag in the Steelers logo. And basically, I just went to Google and got the logo with a transparent background and drug it in. Um, once you drag it in, it's now a layer in your Photoshop. And you can see the different layers here are the different objects. So we have this, if we have the move tool selected over here, we can drag these layers around. So you'll see this is our Steelers logo. There is a logo already here, kind of like where we should place our logo. And then we have two rectangle layers that are shape layers that are the helmet stripe. So we can double click this and name this Steelers logo or whatever. And we can drag that over. And if we press Command T and we grab one of these anchor points and hold Alt or Option, I, I guess it uh, depends on your system. I'm using a PC keyboard on a Mac, so it's a little confusing. Um, but if we shrink this, we can get the size right and line it up here. Now the Steelers logo is a little smaller, so I'm just going to do it like that. And you can see the logo's rotated slightly, um, the template FC logo that is. Uh, you can see it's rotated slightly to get the right angle on the helmet. And uh, we're going to do that as well. So let's go back and press Command T. And then just click on the outside and rotate. And we need something close to like a 30 degree angle. So we're about there, works. We'll hit Enter. And then we can hide the other logo. Uh, we'll hide these stripes too, so you can see the blue one we don't need, but this um, white one, we actually want to make the yellow stripe on the Steelers helmet. So if we come over to our colors here, yours will probably look something like this, black and white. I'm going to click my white and then click the yellow diamond for the Steelers yellow. And then with our libraries over here, we want to go to add to swatches here. And you'll have this and we can name this Steelers yellow and then you, you can see that adds it over here. And the reason we do this is because it makes it so easy to change the color of shapes and text and things like that. Because we can come to this rectangle one copy, which is the stripe, and then click the yellow and it will make that, that color. So that's really easy. Now um, the logo setup is slightly further back than I want. So I aligned the logo, so it's probably gonna be about right here. So I'm gonna come back to the Steelers logo and click and move it to the right a little bit, about 100 pixels, um, and then press Command Save, or Command S to save, or you can go to File, Save. And once you press Command S, or you save this layer, this smart object, it will update this over here. As you can see now, now we have our stripe and our logo. And that's basically the whole mock-up and how it works. You're gonna just kind of repeat this process for all the different elements of the jersey. Uh, and it's pretty simple after you get the hang of it. So uh, if we come back here, uh, we can delete things we don't need. So usually I'll, I'll delete like that kind of thing. I might leave a color fill here just because I think the color fill makes it easier to see your design sometimes. Um, but I usually uncheck it when I save. And then I sometimes leave the different striping because um, I'll reuse templates over and over. So it's nice to have striping that you don't want to remake every time. Now, since I got the helmet done and I got my colors, I now typically go into my colors folder and set up that. So uh, you might want to hide the designs layer because some things might hide the true colors. Um, so let's start with the base here, which is black. And for this jersey, it's going to be a black helmet, black jersey, black socks. So black is the dominant color, so I'm going to leave the base black. Um, now the jersey here, uh, or the helmet here, we're going to change the face mask to black. So you might want to make a new swatch color that is black. So if we come into here, go down, and you add to swatch a black. Um, so you have it over here. I already have one. So I'm going to select that for my face mask. And the bolts are already black, so that's good. The front is this front part here, and then the back is the same in the back. And then the straps, chin guard, I all want to be white. <clears throat> the mounts could be black. Um, typically they're like clear, so I go with like a like a light gray or something like that. Um, the helmet's obviously black. The inside we could do like a yellow or something interesting, but um, I'm gonna try to make this an accurate Steelers jersey. 
recreating it. It's less of a concept jersey, more of a recreation here, just to show you how the whole process works. Um, so I'm going to just Command S and go back to the gray. Actually, I could probably lighten this gray up, you know. I think that's probably a little more realistic. But um, then when we're done with the helmet, we move on to the gloves. Now, typically what I do now for the gloves, I don't really add anything to them. I just will select everything and do like a black. And then I'll go to like the fingers and maybe the strap or something and add like the color yellow. And I think that's a pretty good look. Um, I've noticed that people don't really notice the gloves, so I stopped really putting time into them. Um, and then if we go to the shirt, oh, one other thing about the gloves. For the angled mock-up, both gloves are on the same layer. So I changed the strap color, it changes the strap for both gloves. On the other three versions, or actually the two other versions, the front and the back, if you change the gloves, it will only do one because they're separated. Um, so that's just kind of how I made them for whatever reason. So just keep that in mind when you're doing the gloves for the front and back. Now for the shirt, this thing is basically all black, I believe. So I can just select every layer holding shift, selecting the top holding shift going down and clicking black. And I don't believe there's any other yellow in the jersey. Let's go to the pants. Now the pants are um, yellow with a black belt, I believe. So I'm going to go to uh, from the band uh, front to the pants, make that yellow. And then the belt, I'm going to make black. And the belt buckle, I'm going to leave like a silver. Going down to the shoes, the shoes also include the socks. So the socks, I'm going to keep uh, black. Shoes, I'll make black. And the shoes bottom, I'll make yellow. And there is our color setup. Now, if you're making a concept jersey, a lot of the times you'll play with the colors. I notice a lot of times I'm just kind of testing different things out. If you watch any of my live streams designing, you'll notice I'll like look at a jersey, put the design in, and then I'll be like, maybe it looks better with the yellow belt, maybe the black belt, and kind of just play with the colors um, until I think it looks good. So nothing you do here is finalized. You can always change it. Uh, let's go ahead and bring the designs back. And uh, actually, we're going to poke into the lighting for a quick second because you'll notice the black is really dark. We can't see much of the shading and things. And that's because the uh, template is set up to have these different options to accommodate that. So if we come here to the lighten option in the lighting, we can check that and that will lighten things up a bit more. Now, for me personally, I think this is a little much. So I like to put this at like 50%. And I feel like that's a more um, accurate representation of that. And also there's this thing where you can create clipping masks. So for example, say I don't want this lighten effect on the pants, because you can see it makes it a little too yellow, um, which I might not want. So if I come into the pants here and I press command on my keyboard, so I get this um, uh, little box or so if I come over to one of these black and white layers, the layer masks, you get this box around the pointer finger and that is to select it. So if I come to the pants, go to the black and white layer mask, click that, it will select my pants. Then if I come to this lighten um, folder that's selected and I come down to this button here, the layer mask button, click that, it will make a layer mask of just the pants. Now I want the exact opposite. So what I'm going to do is have this layer selected and press command I, which inverses that. So now that is only affecting the black areas and not the pants. Um, basically it just cuts out the pants, which sometimes you might want. Um, in this case, I don't think it's necessarily needed. So I'm gonna delete the layer mask and I think that's pretty good. Um, but if you're doing like a white jersey or a lighter jersey, you might wanna do the opposite here and do the darken. Um, that just darkens things up. Um, you can sometimes do both too if you want a very dramatic design. Um, and you can also play with the other uh, folders here. So body highlights, maybe things are too bright. You can mess with that opacity. Um, but typically I mess with the lighting at the end. Uh, in this case, because the black jersey, I always use the lighting. Um, I just did that ahead of time to kind of introduce you to that. But let's go ahead and hide all of our um, groups and go into the designs group again. So I'm going to press command and plus on my keyboard to zoom in and then I'm going to hold the space bar and click and drag up to get a closer view of my helmet. So you'll see we have the chin design and the front design left for the helmet and obviously the chin design is the uh, chin guard and then the front design is this part here in the front of the helmet. 
So I don't think I ever used the chin design, but I just had it as an option in case other people wanted to use it. Um, but I'm not going to show you that here. Um, but let's open up the front design and you can see we have some text already set up here. We can hide this grid because we, we don't need that. Um, and if you want to go ahead and just add your own text, you can by double clicking this and maybe we type Steelers. And you'll notice this is obviously too big, so we can select that, go to our font size and maybe make that 30 or something and get the move tool. We'll probably have to adjust this a little forward um, or a little up and to the right, a little, I don't know why I said forward, more central. And if I save that and come back, that should be pretty good. Yeah, there you go. Um, so about there it works. Um, you'll probably want a different font. So I actually have a pack of NFL fonts. I think the Steelers are in here. Yeah, right here. So I can get that and then I'm going to press command T and hold alt and just increase the size of that a bit. Steelers, boom. There we go. That's pretty cool. You can also go to Google and search up their text logo and maybe just go ahead and click and drag that in instead. And this is the more appropriate logo probably for this because it's what they actually use. And then I can hide this text over here by clicking the eyeball, command S to save, come back. And that is what the Steelers have. So I'm pretty happy with the helmet then. So let's go ahead and close both of these out. And let's move on to the shirt. Now, the gloves are here as well, and we can add logos to them. But like I said, I stopped messing with the gloves, so I don't really do anything to them. I'm just going to hide them. Uh, but you can add designs there. Let's open up the shirt, and you can see the shirt is filled with smart objects because there is a lot of different parts to the top. So we have, what is this, like five different collars. Um, basically, the collar front is the immediate spot where you'd put like the NFL logo or something like that. Um, and then we have each part of the individual collar broken up by the seams. So if I hide this, you can see it's right here, but the front collar still overlap with it. Then we have the right, the left, the right back and the left back. So all of these you have to adjust individually. So if you make a change to one, it only does that one. Some of our other templates like update all of them. But uh, I, football jerseys can be weird, so I wanted the full customization for each part. And if we open one of these up, I can kind of show you how it works. So it comes, again, default with some rectangles that you can easily change the color of. So I could come in here and make this yellow and maybe hide that one and save it. And we get a yellow stripe on the collar. Now, the Sealer's jersey has no striping or anything on the collar, so I'm just going to go ahead and hide these four. But the collar front here, I actually want visible because I'm gonna add the NFL logo. So let's close out the collar, open up the collar front. I'm gonna press Command zero, which zooms in completely, and then Command minus to zoom out one. And uh, by the way, if you haven't noticed, there's these blue lines, which are the guides. Um, typically they're central, sometimes they're a little off though. So I tend to ignore them in a lot of instances. And to hide them, you can just do Command H, um, and then you're good to go. But let's go ahead and grab the NFL logo, drag that in. I'm going to press Command T. And you'll notice I can't see any of my anchor points because I'm too zoomed in. So when I'm lazy, I'll just come up here, make sure my link is here and attached, and set this to like 20% real quick. And then I have my anchors. And I'm holding Alt and decreasing the size. And I actually am going to press Command H to get my guide up here to center this. And I think this has to be kind of small. I think about there is about the right size. And you'll notice this uh, particular smart object is very small. So things are going to be pixelated, as you can see with this logo. And I'm going to hide the um, text here. And the color fill, I'm actually going to make black. And sometimes I like to add a texture here or something. So if you are somewhat familiar with Photoshop and you have a pattern, so if you come down to some adjustments and pattern fill, um, you might have some patterns here that you could use. I have um, some from Template FC, the patch maker um, ones. So I sometimes like to use these, like this one would be a good one. Um, and set that to what, five, ooh, 25, yeah. Click OK, and then maybe set that to screen and just decrease the opacity so it's like a subtle texture. Um, and you can also like Google textures and drag them in and adjust the opacity or whatever. Um, and if I save this and come back, 
you can see we have that little bit of texture on the front collar that I like personally. Um, just to make this logo stand out a little bit and have that like divided off. And I think that looks a bit nicer from a distance. Um, so that's an option. Um, let's close out of that and move on to the shirt design, which will tie into uh, the rest of the jersey pretty much. So if we open this up, you can see we have the Nike logo, uh, a logo, um, or the Temple FC logo, and our text. So this is all set up so we can uh, adjust and place things appropriately. If we come back, you can see the logos are set up in the, like, the pretty ideal places. So don't delete any of this at first and come in and duplicate the text. So you can duplicate by pressing Command J, then right click and clear the layer style and then hide the other text below it and just drag this to the top. So this will be the guide that we use to line things up. And this is going to be the one that we're going to modify. Um, and then we want to add the Steelers logo above this one because the Steelers have the logo on their chest. So we can go back to Google. Um, or we could go to the helmet and grab the um, the logo we use there. But I'm just going to go ahead and search up the Steelers logo again real fast. Drag that in. Press Command-T, Alt, adjust the size. Set it up exactly where the Template FC logo is. Hide the Template FC logo. And we can actually hide or um, delete that because we can use the Steelers logo there as a guide now if we make any adjustments. Uh, I'm going to hide the Nike logo and drag that to the bottom. And yeah, these are the only two things we need. So I'm going to come into my text, double click it. And again, like I said, I have all the NFL fonts. So I'm going to do the NFL Steelers and set that up. And let me bring up the other text real quick so I can make sure this is aligned centrally. I think that's pretty good. I think I might have to make it a little bigger. So I'm going to click and drag down the anchor point there. And I'm going to double click this. If you want to make adjustments to the text, um, you got to go to the character or paragraph um, settings. So if you go to window, you'll have character um, or paragraph here to bring them up. I have them in this nice little sidebar. So the big one that I, I think it's probably the only one I ever touch in these circumstances is the vertical um, spacing here. So it's set to 10 right now. I might just bump that to zero to get the more appropriate spacing. Um, but if you have a weird font, you might have to adjust that and whatnot. Um, also down here, everything is capitalized. So if you adjust this for text, uh, if you duplicate it, let's say, and you want text on the front, um, just be aware that it's all capitalized right now. And what I mean by that is if I bring this up so you guys can see, if I press command J to duplicate this text and I set uh, and I change that to Steelers. And let's say I want this on the front like that. Um, this text will all be capitalized. Um, so if I come in here back to these settings, um, it's all capitalized. Now for this font, it doesn't matter because there's only one version of it, which is capital. Uh, but if this was a different font, you can see it lower cases it or it makes it lowercase. But this way, it's all capital. So just keep that in mind if you do something like that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and delete that because the Steelers don't have anything like this. And this is pretty good. Um, this is basically all the Steelers have. Now, one thing I want to mention is on Template FC, we have a um, free little PSD that has different um, layer styles that you can add to make your stuff look like a patch um, to make it more realistic. I'm just pulling it up here and talking while I stall or talking to stall. But you can see here we have the patch maker PSD. You can see it can take your normal 2D logo and make it look uh, a little more three dimensional, a little better. You can see we have a tutorial on how to use that as well on the template FC website. So feel free to check that out. Um, but basically what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to come to my text, my 99, double click, go to my styles, and I'm going to go down to my patch maker layer styles after I download and install that and click on one of them. And you can see that we have these textures and these three dimensional effects. So I'm going to find a texture that I kind of like, I need one that's a little subtle.
think we're going to go with this one. Um, and since the size of this document is uh, a little different from the original layer styles, we have to make some adjustments. So <clears throat> let's go to the bevel and emboss. And the size, I like to make like two or three. So we'll set that to two. Um, the texture, we're going to come in. Scale, I think is fine, but the depth is too high. So I'm going to set that to 15. So it's a lot subtler. And actually, I might do 10. Um, inner shadow is fine. I don't really want a gradient overlay. And then the drop shadow, I want to be about, um, we'll do one. Um, and actually, you probably can't even see the drop shadow. If I inverse it, you can kind of see what it does there. It adds a bit of a drop shadow, makes it a little more realistic. Um, but that just helps with the overall look for the jersey, in my opinion. And then I'll right click, copy that layer style, come to the Steelers logo, right click and paste it. So it has the same thing going on. And now typically with logos, I'll separate the colors and do one for each individual color. But for beginners, I feel like I don't want to do that. And I also cover that in the Patchmaker tutorial on Template FC if you really want to know. But let's go ahead. Um, I'm done with the, the design of the front. So I'm going to hide this background layer that I've been making visible, save this, come back, and there we go. Now, I think the numbers are a little too small. So I'm going to come back to the 99, press Command-T, and I'm going to hold Shift and Alt this time and extend it outwards. And I'm going to hold Shift and extend it downwards. So I'm kind of modifying the font a little bit, but I'm trying to make it feel a little better. So let's save it and come back. That's a little better, but now I actually think the spacing is too much. So let's come, let's double click again, go back to our character. Come back to this vertical um, spacing and let's do like minus 50. And I think that is closer to what the Steelers jerseys actually look like. And maybe a little more spacing actually. Let's try 25. Actually, I'm going to do, I'm going to type in 35 because I think that's the happy medium. And let's save that. All right, pretty good. Now, I think I could move everything up a bit as well. and be happy with that. The text actually could go a little further up and we can save that. So keep in mind that everything that you do is does not have to stay where it's at. You can always make adjustments to make it look a little better. Um, so that's kind of what I continuously do. I'm actually gonna slide this to the left a bit because um, I think that might look better. I don't know if that's exactly a line, but I just, it just looks better. Um, which is all you need. So, okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Now I'm gonna move on to the shoulders here and I'm gonna leave my shirt design up and I'm gonna come open up the right shoulder and open up the left shoulder. And I'm gonna click on the 99, the top layer, come to the shirt design and I'm gonna grab the 99 text and just drag it and drop it here. So when you do this, you wanna click, select, keep um, selecting it, don't, pick up your mouse, go here, wait for this layer to pop up, still don't let go, come down, then let go. And then that should come over. And I'm gonna press Command T, decrease the size, and we're gonna rotate it this way, 90 degrees, and align it with the 99 that's already here. And I'm gonna zoom in with Command Plus again, and kind of adjust it to fit like so. That's pretty good, we can hide the other 99 save that and let's come back real quick to see how that looks. So I think that's a little too far back. So let's bring it down. I'm gonna hold shift, bring it down and I'm gonna bring it to the right a bit and then save it. And I think that's a little bit uh, better. Let's go ahead and drag that one to the left shoulder now. Um, and you wanna, when you go, when you add this one to the right and adjust the size of it, you wanna drag this one to the left. So these are the same size. Uh, it's not as important on this one uh, but it's more important on the front and the back because they're like, you can tell the sizing that um, they have to be equal. This one is, since it's an angled view, one can be kind of smaller and you might not notice. Um, but let's do the same sort of thing here. Line it up, save. It's pretty good. I'm gonna move it more central though. There we go. And I can actually move this down a tad. 
And I think that's pretty good. So that's the shoulders. That's basically all I do for the shoulders when adding the numbers. Um, and we can close that out. And we can actually close, we can close out the shirt design. I typically leave it open in case I want to make any adjustments. Um, so let's move on to the right sleeve. Now we are actually going to be adding our design. So let's go ahead and hide the um, guides here or the grid. I'm going to zoom in twice on both of these. And I will check the background layer so you guys can kind of see what I'm doing. And we'll start with this right sleeve. You'll notice we have the Nike logo already set up here. Um, so I'm going to actually just right click and paste that layer style we had saved from before to be the Nike swoosh. Um, so that's kind of handy that we have that. Um, and if you want to change the color of this, you can double click and go to color overlay and then change the color to like yellow or whatever it may be. Um, you could also press command and click the thumbnail and that will select it. And then if you come down here, select solid color. And then you can make this whatever color you want. So we could do yellow um, or we could just do white, which I'm going to do. And then if you click and drag the effects to that one, make sure you don't have a color overlay. Um, it will add those effects and then you can just delete that and have this as your Nike. And if you're planning on changing the colors or making multiple versions, this is a lot easier because you can just click to change the color. Um, and it's a, it's, a, it's a lot better if you're doing a lot of stuff. Um, so this is kind of what I do. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to set the Nike swoosh towards the top. So I have room for the Steeler stripe and I'm going to save this real quick and just make sure things are aligned. So that's pretty good. Um, yeah, I think that should be all right. Now on the left sleeve, I might make the Nike swoosh available or visible. If I save that and come back, I just want to see, yeah, you can barely see it. So um, I'm just going to come back and drag this Nike logo we have, right click and flip horizontal, line it up and then move it to the top just so we have the same one. It's a little easier. Let's save it. And I, I'm not sure if this will be visible. It barely is. I actually got to move it. Oops. I actually have to move it down a bit. That's pretty good. I actually don't think this would be visible, but it's whatever. And I'm actually going to come back and make this Nike swoosh a bit bigger. So I'm going to press Command T and extend it to the right just a bit and save it. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, so for this angled mock-up, these sleeves are slightly off uh, because obviously you see more of this sleeve. So we can see like the complete side. And this one we don't really see. So um, I think this one would probably be more accurately there. Yeah, um, but this sleeve, our design is going to be kind of more bottom. I'll kind of show you as we do this. So let's just do it. Um, let's go to the rectangle tool here. Um, you can also press U on your keyboard, but uh, this might be something else. So click and hold. Make sure you have the rectangle tool. And let's just create any size rectangle like this. Um, now mine have rounded corners. So I'm going to come in here um, and just click uh, zero. Select the 10 and make it zero and then click off and it should make all my corners zero so it is a normal rectangle and then that's all i need and i like to adjust it to the size of the document so i'm just going to do that and the majority of the steelers stripe is yellow so i'm going to try to adjust this to get the right size let me save it real quick kind of see what we're working with um, so i think the steelers stripe is a little bit bigger and we'll go down all the way to the sleeve so let me do this yeah that's a bit better the nike swoosh might have to go up a tad bit more and this might have to extend a bit because this is a pretty thick design i think that's pretty good so we'll roll with that so this is our main rectangle and when doing striping i basically just always work with duplicating a rectangle so i'm going to press command j to duplicate this and i'm going to select black and then i'm going to press command t i'm going to hold alt and shift and decrease the size um, so I'm just eyeballing it. So something like that, and I'm going to duplicate this again and then select white, press command T and make it a bit smaller. So we have a setup like this. Then I'm going to select both the white and black rectangles while holding shift, click, hold shift and drag up to about there. 
And I'm gonna press Command J to duplicate both of those together. Click, hold, shift, and drag down again. To about there, okay. And then I'm gonna select all four of the black and white rectangles. Um, press Command T and hold shift and try to make sure they're centered in the yellow rectangle. And I think that's pretty good. Let me save this and see how it looks. And that's pretty close to the Steeler striping. I think there's a little bit more of a gap in the middle here, but it's not something that I care to really make a bunch of adjustments on. I think it's like, it's probably like three fourths of the size, these ones. So like it would be more like this. Yeah, so I, I'd say that's good. That's about the striping. Um, and then when I'm happy with that, I will select all of these. So click the top, hold shift and click the bottom and press command G to group them and call it like striping just to stay organized, save it again. And then we're going to drag the striping over to the left sleeve. And you'll notice if we set it up about here, so this is a little lower than we have it here. You can see the stripe is higher. If you look at the gap from the bottom, um, this is closer to the bottom. If we save this and come over, you can see that's about perfectly aligned. Um, just this, the, uh, the left shoulder or the left sleeve is a little bit lower just because of the angle. It's gonna, you kind of have to make adjustments to make things fit. Um, and that's just one of them. The front and back uh, mock-up templates, the sleeves are identical. So you could just completely drag over and have the same alignment for everything. And it's a lot easier. Um, I'm showing you the angled template just for that reason, because it's a little more complex in that respect. Um, but now we are happy with the jersey. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of the sleeves. And if I zoom in here, you'll see we have uh, designs on the cuff here, which are the right cuff and the left cuff. Um, so if I just hide those, you can see they're black. But some teams like, um, oh, I can't think of, I want to see the Chiefs might have this. They have their stripe on the cuff part a uh, very small one uh, some teams have designs there and sometimes you want the sleeve to extend so you might add something to the cuff designs uh, i'd say about like 90 percent of my designs don't feature any cuff designs, so i just hide them and then the right arm and left arm are the undershirt which i hardly ever put anything on there except in my college football redesign series i did it once um, but yeah so that is the shirt done so that's the steelers jersey and that's a pretty good recreation so i'm going to go ahead and hide the shirt and move on to the pants. Um, so by the way, if you see any of these layers without a chain in the middle, be sure to click the chain, um, just an FYI. Uh, but let's open up the right leg and the left leg. And uh, I'm gonna come into the this Nike logo and right click, paste our layer style again, nice and easy. And I'm gonna save that. And this is actually all we need on the left leg because the Steelers don't have anything um, going on in the left leg and you can't see the stripe from this view. Uh, because it's hidden obviously so all that's going to be on this leg is the Nike swoosh So I'm just going to do that and I'm going to close out of this uh, Of course, sometimes you might add designs to the pants to um, So you would have something there, but in this case I don't so I'll close out of that and we can just focus on this right leg So you can see we have a stripe setup as well as a logo setup so this logo here would actually be the NFL logo because um, I think every NFL team has the NFL logo on their pants. So let's go ahead and drag that here. I'm gonna do this lazy technique again, selecting 25 and lining this up. And this logo is actually pretty small, so I'll make it like that. I'll delete this logo. And again, we can right click and paste our layer style to get that 3D effect. And that's pretty good. Now the Steelers stripe is a pretty thick um, black stripe. So um, this stripe here that is set up, I could just select it and select black. And if I save that, that is actually pretty much what the Steelers have. Um, it's not too far off. Um, I do think I would bring this slightly um, right. So slightly forward on the jersey and that'd be a little more accurate. Um, but I'm gonna explain kind of the striping setup here. Um, so if you're making other jerseys, it's easy to adjust. Uh, I basically set up the most common stripe, which is a color with um, a color on the outside. So white down the middle and black on the outsides. I feel like this stripe setup is, or was one of the most common. It's kind of changed now. Teams kind of go more simple with the new redesigns. 
um, like the uh, falcons and whatnot. If you want to make the adjustment, the middle part is the color. So if I select yellow, you can see that is the color that adjusts. And if we double click and open this up, the stroke is the outside part. So we could change that to whatever we may want. So in my case, I want it black and black. Of course, you can do what we did on the sleeves and just create your own again with a rectangle. Just make sure you don't have that rectangle selected. Um, but you could just do something like this. Set that to zero. Set that to black and boom. You're good to go. Um, either way works and there's no like right way to do it. So just keep that in mind. I'll go back to this and delete that. Save. And the jersey is basically done now. Um, I do want to show you guys the socks though um, because those are our last smart objects. Let me close out the right leg. Open this up. And you can add like different striping and things here. Uh, typically at most I'd add some striping and actually I think the most common way I do this is I match it with the sleeve striping because I want like matching elements in a jersey. So if I open up the right sleeve and get this striping, I can come in and drag this to the sock and put it like, I don't know, we'll put it right here. And then I save that. And if you want to have things even on both sides, this is especially important in the front and back versions of this mock-up. Um, if you select the striping, press command and right click or um, click the um, like bottom background layer. So this, and if you drag both of those over to the other side, and then you make that background layer visible, you can align the background layer with this layer so it's completely filled. And then that will align the striping exactly the same. So both of these are identical now. And we can save this one and this one. Now, because it's an angled template, they're not exactly identical, so the right sock has to come down just a bit. But for the front and back templates, that works great. Uh, but the sealers don't have sock stripes, so I can just hide that. And that is the jersey complete. Now, um, are we done? No, there are a few other adjustments that you can make. So let me close out all of the smart objects that are open. And the first thing that I would do is tweak the lighting if I need to. Um, so in this case, we already kind of did that, but you might want to play around with some things. So like maybe the body highlights are adding a weird color. So you might like knock that down a bit um, or the lighten. Uh, again, we set this to 50, but maybe you want it a little less, maybe a little more. Um, I'm, I'm happy with 50 though. Um, you also have the helmet uh, ones that you can come in and make adjustments to, but I'm personally not going to do that. And then we have the reflection and the glossy options. So I think I want a bit of a gloss, but this makes the helmet a little too gray. So I'm going to set that to 25. Hit enter. And I might add just a bit of a reflectiveness. Um, so obviously the fully set reflectiveness is a little much for the Steelers, but if I knock this down to like 13, I think that could be cool. I'm um, actually not feeling it. Uh, I'll just leave the glossy, uh, but that's pretty good. So there's our lighting and um, any uh, effects. Now the other thing we might want to do is the color. So a lot of times like certain colors will get um, lightened up. So for example, if you look at the, where do I have a yellow, this um, sleeve? If I open up the sleeve, you can see this yellow is kind of orangey. Now I'm not sure if that'll come across on the recording, but to me on my screen, this is a little orangey. And then over here, it's much more yellow because of the lighting, like really lightens it up. And you can kind of see the difference if I do this. So it's a little more orange. And then with this, it's a little lightened up. Um, for this, in this case, for the Steelers, that's actually what I want. I think that's more accurate to the Steelers color. But let's say I wanted the more orange color. I could come in to, say, hue and saturation down in my effects here, which will add this layer and these settings. And I could go to where it says master and do yellows. And I could adjust this further to the left to get more orange. And probably wouldn't go that far, but like probably like five to get the more orange look. Um, or if I'm happy with the um, hue, I could bump up the saturation, make it a little brighter, more interesting, or of course make it darker or lighter. Um, usually I don't touch the darker or lighter effects unless it's like a little, like um, just smaller things, like maybe logos, those colors. That's the only time I really adjust the lightness. 
Um, you can also do this to the whole thing. So if you select master and bump up the saturation, it will do it for everything. Um, but since our jersey is black, the black won't be affected by any of this. Um, so I'm just going to leave that at zero and I'm just going to delete. You can also do a levels. So if we come in here and do levels, um, this left one will make things uh, darker and then the right one will make things lighter. So if I click this left one, bring it in, you can see it will darken the jersey up a bit. Um, so in this case, I don't really want to do that too much, maybe like five. And then the right one, maybe I lighten things up a bit. And this can help you get a more realistic uh, finish on the jersey um, or like a more dramatic finish. Um, I think it looks a little better with in this case. But I, if um, I was making this jersey, I would personally add just a touch of levels and probably call it a day. Now, the final thing I want to mention is the... Um, individual smart object adjustments. So this is something that I didn't really do much when I made this template, but ever since then I've been doing kind of a lot of it. And it's using the liquify tool to adjust the smart objects to fit the body better. So what I mean by that is if we come into, we're gonna do this right pant. If I come into this right leg, I'm gonna click the chain um, so there's no chain connecting our layer mask and our smart object. So I want to select our smart object and go to filter liquify. And then I want to go to this top one and you'll see we have a brush here and I'm going to increase the size with the bracket tool. So I'm going with my right bracket to increase the size a bit. And if we come to the show backdrop option, if I bring that to zero, that's like you can't see the background. If I bring that up, you can see it a little bit. So I want it somewhere in the middle. And I'm going to zoom in here. And we can use this to make the stripe fit the jersey a bit better. So I might just click in the middle here and drag this in a bit. Maybe make it um, a bit smaller with the bracket and like fit this curve. That's a little much like that and then like here at the butt maybe i like bulge it out a bit and then maybe bring it bring it forward a bit there something like that click ok and then i would say that kind of fits the jersey a bit better um, and you can do that to any one of these i do it very subtly typically um, the most dramatic place i've done it is on the front pants um, because the front mock-up, the pant stripes kind of look a little wonky, so I make that adjustment. So that is something you can do there. Um, also, if you want to adjust the way it's set up uh, just in general, you can again unlink the chain, press Command T, and then if you right-click Warp, you'll see how the um, smart object is kind of set up to fit with things. So you can see this top part maybe isn't like super aligned, so if you're doing like a stripe across, it might not look the best, so you might want to like bring this one down or something like that. Uh, stuff like just different things like that you can adjust. Maybe I bring this in actually a bit and then bring that back. So yeah, I'm gonna do something like this real quick just to mess with it. Cool. And then when you're done, you hit enter and it'll make our liquify adjustment. Press command zero to zoom out. And there's a little better version of our stripe on the pants. And then let's link it again, come back and call it a day. So when you're done, um, you can figure out a way to display this to post it on the internet or whatever. Um, so I, I kind of have it set up so you can do that yourself real quick. So if you just change the background color to like yellow or something, um, you can see the background's a little uh, messed up, but you could change this to like uh, multiply and then knock down the opacity and then um, that's probably a little more accurate and you can go ahead and save this and display it um, or you could just hide both the shadow and the background and save it with a transparent background so you could add it to other things so this is what i do i do my three different views and i save them together so i would press um, command shift and save actually the easier way is to just go export save for web um, and you would want to save this as a PNG 24. So if you go to the uh, preset PNG 24, make sure transparency is checked, save, name it whatever. So I'll just call this Steelers. 
And then what I would typically do is like open up, um, we'll open up a new document here. We'll do nineteen twenty by ten eighty three hundred pixels, and create. And then we would say just drag this in. And a quick way to like set this or to display this is to maybe like have this here, and then maybe actually let's do here. Duplicate it with Command J. Press Command T. Increase the size. Show off the jersey here, maybe duplicate it again, and maybe like show off the helmet. I don't know, something like that. Maybe make the background a better color. Yeah, um, so, but something like that, and then display it a little bit better or in a cooler way. This would actually probably look better if it was just like the pants. And then you would save that in the same way and then have your display or whatever and add things to the background. That's basically how I go about it. But thank you guys for watching. I hope you learned something. If you're new to this, uh, hopefully this gets you into it and allows you to start a new hobby, which is a lot of fun. Uh, please be sure to subscribe to the channel for more Jersey stuff like this. Um, also leave a like on the video if it helped you at all. Be sure to check out templatefc.com in the description down below to get any mock-ups or things like that. Thanks for watching, guys. I will see you in the next one. Peace.